night or begin that this restoration by the church becoming apostolic and coming to a place of power and advancing the kingdom we're advancing the kingdom here the fact of what is taking place is a sign that the kingdom is advancing. Come on, say the kingdom is advancing. Kingdom is advancing. And God's going to be glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, uh, when you advance something, you move forward. That's right. Hallelujah. Come on, say we're moving forward. We're moving forward. Oh, hallelujah. Not being stagnant, not, not going backwards, but we're moving forward for the glory of the Lord. Amen. We're in that season of, of kingdom advance. Because we're in the season of kingdom advance and the restoration of the apostolic church, God is restoring the apostles and prophets' ministry back to the church. Yes. This is very vital. And the better we understand apostles, prophets, the kingdom of God, the better we will be able to cooperate with it. And the better we will be able to experience the benefits. Come on, say benefits of it. You know, if you understand it, then you can benefit from it. That's right. You know, if you, can, if you don't understand how to drive your car and how to start it up, you can't benefit from it. Hallelujah. I hope you can do that. Amen. Amen. But when you understand the thing, you benefit from it better. So the more understanding, and that's why the apostles and prophets must come to bring revelation and understanding to the church of the kingdom of God and the apostles' ministry. I want to really emphasize these two things because I come to see that this is a lack, where a lack of understanding is. Hallelujah. I, I, I hear leaders talking about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. But they're not apostolic. You can't advance the kingdom if you're not apostolic. Because you don't have that. Without the apostolic dimension, you can't advance the kingdom. So what is the apostolic dimension? Well, I'm glad you asked. The apostolic dimension is the measure of power that Jesus gives to the church through the apostle or leader of that church. It's the measure of power. We have a measure of power here. And that's called the apostolic dimension. Dimension is measurement. Come on, say dimension is a measurement. So, that apostolic dimension is what causes the kingdom to advance. And we're walking in our dimension. And I want you to know, it's a strong dimension on this house. Hallelujah. So God's going to be glorified. So the apostolic dimension must come on the life of every believer. Every believer must step into the apostolic dimension. You say, well, how do I do that? You, you need to get around an apostle. You need to get around an apostolic anointing and have that impartation take place. So a church will become apostolic when apostolic anointing rests on the leadership. That's why a lot of folks say, they, they come, they come heart centered, and they, and they go back to their church and say, oh, I wish I had this move God in my church. It will not happen if it don't get on your leader. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The anointing don't flow from the from, from the floor up. The, the anointing flows from the head down. It's got to get on the head first. So I encourage you to bring your pastor to Harvison. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just let him hang out here a little bit. And then that apostolic dimension can get on that church. Amen. Hallelujah. Every leader don't have to be an apostle. Every leader won't be an apostle. He say he gave some apostles. But as a pastor, you can have the apostolic dimension upon your ministry and upon your church through impartation. Yeah. Right. You know, know what that's going to take? It's going to take humility. Come on, somebody say humility. Humility. Hallelujah. Pride is not going to make it here. We got to come to the place of Lord, I mean, Lord, I don't have it, Lord. Show me where it's at, and I'll go and get it. So, that apostolic dimension is that degree of power. See, Jesus had a dimension without measure. Yeah. He had the anointing without measure, John 3, 34. He had, that, he had the power unrestricted. But He gives us to us by measure. Yeah. So, we impart that measure to those we minister to. Can you say amen? amen? So, the kingdom of God in the apostolic church is very vital for the kingdom being advancing. I'll say the apostolic church is vital for the kingdom being advancing. Now, See, apostolic church of God used to advance the kingdom. And I emphasize the fact that the kingdom of God is the rulership and the authority of God in the earth. Now, I'm going to take a little time here and, and, and give you a couple points as to why the church need apostles. Hallelujah. Can you handle this this morning? Yeah. Oh, I know you can handle it because you're hungry for God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know you can handle it because you want all the Lord has for you. You want 
be here if you did. Amen? So we thank the Lord for that. Number one, come on, say number one. The apostles' ministry is needed in order to bring the total ministry of Jesus back to the church. No, I say total ministry of Jesus. The apostles' ministry will bring the total ministry of Jesus back to the church. Because much of the church is not functioning on the total ministry of Jesus. Jesus did more than teach and preach. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me set up a little bit on this side. Jesus did more than just taught and preached. And we got a lot of ministers, a lot of leaders that figure, well, if I just teach the word, if I just preach the word, I carry out the ministry of Jesus. No! Matthew 9 35 in your Bible says Jesus went about all their regions, Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness upon right. yeah. So it's teaching, preaching, and healing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So are you teaching, preaching, and healing? Are you teaching, preaching, and healing? So those those three areas cover the ministry of Jesus. So the apostles will bring that total ministry back to the church, which is lacking. Folks, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people in churches that are bound. Yeah. Yeah. They're bound by evil yes, spirits. Yeah. And they don't even know it. They're bound by evil spirits and the leaders don't even know it. But I want you to know, the ministry of Jesus Christ will set the captives free. It will loose you from drug addiction. It will loose you from crack cocaine. It will loose you from alcohol. It will loose you from tobacco. It will loose you from an immoral lifestyle. Because that's the total ministry of Jesus. The total ministry of Jesus must be restored back to the church. Jesus said, the works I do, you shall do also. John chapter 14, verse 12. Now, I won't have you turn to all scriptures. I will quote some scriptures. But I, I'm pretty sure if I quote a scripture, you can go there and find it. I just don't sling verses. Preachers, we got to stop slinging verses. Amen. 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 If you say something, it better be there. I don't know close to it. Amen. But I guarantee you in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said, The works I do, you shall do also, and the greater works these shall do, because I'm going to my Father. Amen. So, that greater works will bring the total and full ministry back to the church, and this is one of the reasons why apostles are needed. Can you say amen? amen? Why? Because what took place in the book of Acts will never take place unless the apostles are in charge of the church. Amen. Amen. That's right. Why do you think the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles? Yes. That's right. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost carried out through the Apostles. Mm-hmm. So we, I hear people preaching about, oh, God sent another Pentecost. Oh, God sent another fiery Bible. God sent, sent, sent. Hey, it's not going to happen until the Apostles get back to their position in the church. Because the church in the book of Acts was an apostolic church. This is the model. I believe every person needs to examine their church to see if their church models or is trying to model the church in the book of Acts. That church was apostolically led. They had fivefold ministers there. They had signs, wonders. They had miracles. People were healed. People were delivered. So the, 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 the apostles must come back in order to bring the total ministry of Jesus back to the church. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Okay, not, not in the second place. Apostles must be restored back to the church because apostles are first in God's authority. Come on, say first. 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 Now we, I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Because this is truly one of those right now verses for the season that we're in. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the apostles are first in God's authority. Come on, say authority. authority. Amen. And see, that's what that's what Adam lost. Adam lost authority. He lost the kingdom. So God is restoring the kingdom back to the church, but he'll use the apostolic ministry or the apostles' ministry to bring this about. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and there's one little verse there. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for teaching us and showing us these things. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. The apostles are first in God's authority. And we need some real authority back in the church. Amen. I'm talking about some real power. Amen. I'm not talking about just talking about power. I'm talking about demonstrating power. Amen. I'm talking about demonstrating miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about sickness being healed in Jesus. That demons being cast out. Miracles taking place. Supernatural provision. 
The apostles are first in that authority. Verse 28, and God has set some in the church. And God has set some in the church. First apostles, you need to underline first. Mm -hmm.